I share with you the first time I ever heard a message of universalism is from a pastor in the Philippines. And I want to tell you, it is afflicting your country. And that's why it's important that you take heed of this message. Because I'm telling you, a lot of people in your country are being offered a shortcut to heaven right now without having to believe and follow Jesus anymore simply because verses were taken out of context and a new doctrine and a new gospel is now born where all men are saved. And that is as far as it can be from the Word of God as the East from the West. It's unbelievably dangerous because when you offer that to people, you basically rob salvation from them. The, um, we're going to have to answer to those uh, jumping uh, makeup uh, company people. I didn't know that from selling makeup you can be so loud. But um, our message this afternoon is the great collusion. Mm. Everybody, if you turn on TV, you hear Russian collusion, Ukrainian collusion, Trump's collusion. You hear about collusion all the time. And it's about time that you understand that everything I just mentioned is absolutely a non-collusion. But let me explain to you what collusion is. Collusion, according to the Cambridge doc, uh, Dictionary, is agreement between people, or may I say, even creatures, to act together, secretly, or illegally, in order to deceive or cheat someone, or may I say, many. See, the master deceiver is Satan. It's, by the way, all he knows. The Bible says that he is the deceiver of the nations. And the Bible says that even when he was thrown for a thousand years into the bottomless pit, so he may deceive the nations no more than when he was released for a short time, he went out and deceived the nations once again. That's all he knows. Deception is all around us. And I want to submit to you this afternoon that there was, there is, and there will be a great deception and a great collusion. But wait a minute. Don't be so depressed. We know the end and we know who wins. Let us, first of all, remember that God created all to worship Him. And all were created by Him. And Jesus, being God, was there at the time of the creation as part of the Creator, not of the creation. Amen? And so we have to remember that. People were created to worship Him. Psalm 146 verses 5 and 6 says, Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever. John 1 says about Jesus, In the beginning was the Word. And by the way, in the beginning, it's the first words of the whole Bible. In the beginning, so then, was the Word. And the Word was with God. When God created the world in the beginning, the Word was with God. Jesus was with God. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was part of God, with God. At the beginning, and he was in the beginning with God, and all things were made, what? Through him, 
And without him, what are, some people say, well, what if Jesus wasn't there? Let's put Jesus aside. How can you put Jesus aside when without him, nothing was made that was made? When you put Jesus aside, there is nothing that can be standing in this universe. Do you understand that? Basically, John chapter 1 is telling you he is God. He is with God. And without him, God would have done nothing because through him were all things made. This is why there is no way anyone ever can be saved without Jesus. It is like believing in God without acknowledging that there is a God. Now we have to also remember in Colossians 1 it says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption. How? Through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is what? The image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. When you see Jesus, you see God. He is the image of the invisible God. People could not see God. Nobody ever saw his face. So when you saw Jesus, you saw God, by the way. The first, by the way, when Moses entered into the tabernacle, the Bible says that he spoke to the Lord face to face. As a man speaks to his friend. How can he speak to God face to face in a few verses later? When he asked God to show him his face, God says, nobody can see my face and live. Who did he speak to inside the tabernacle? I submit to you, Jesus was there already in the tabernacle speaking to Moses face to face. And he has delivered us from that power of darkness. And he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him, say that. Remember we, we said today, we, whenever the word all comes, we say it together loud. For by him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible. You know what it means? Can you see an angel right now? No. But the angels exist. We, can, we just cannot see them. And they were created by Him. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, say that now, all things were created through Him and for Him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. How can anyone just dismiss Jesus ever? How can I, as a Jew, ever say Jesus is good for the Christians, but he's not for the Jews, when in him all things are made? Not just the Gentiles who eat bacon, lechon, and other things. All things. Ecclesiastic 12.13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Psalm 100 verse 3, know ye that the Lord, He is God, it is that he that hath made us, and not we ourselves, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So now we understand, we concluded, God created us, and we were made for him in order to worship him. However, if God made us to worship him, that means that he wants people to worship him how in spirit and in truth how can anyone worship someone in spirit and in truth unless he does it from his 
heart. <laughs> Which means in order for us to worship him in spirit and in truth, we must have what? Free will. God gave all of us what? Free will. In other words, we can choose to either worship him or not, love him or not, accept him or not. And when we do accept and do love and do worship, it's because we chose to. And that is what we call true worship. When, look, if you marry a woman and she can't stand you, but she comes to you and she says, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Is that the kind of love you want from, a, from, from, from your wife? If your little kids are coming, you know they can't stand you. But then come, come here and they come to you like that. What do you have to say to that? I love you, I love you, I love you. I... It's like a robot. God did not create us robots and put us on automatic mode to say we love you, we worship. No. Without free will, there is no way anyone could ever love. Love is based on free will. Without love, we have a problem. And when God is love, we cannot love God unless there is a free will in us. So God gave all free will. Genesis 2, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall what? Surely die. These are the words of God. You better take the word of God to the bank because he knows what he, he created us. And he knows exactly the manual. Because he wrote the manual. He wrote the instructions. He knows who we are. He says, look, don't touch that. It's like a parent says to his children, don't put your fingers in the electricity outlet. I mean, you, you got to get, get electrified. I mean, don't do that because you're going to die. If you, if, you, if you jump off a super tall bridge, you, you'll die. Don't do that. Look, you can eat of what? Every tree of the gardens you may what? Freely eat. Mango, mango. Guava, guava. Papaya, papaya. Apple, apple. Pear, pear. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Anything you want. It's so beautiful. The world was so beautiful. No tsunamis, no earthquakes, no typhoons, no volcanoes, and there was no floods. There was no hot. I mean, in the cool of the day, we just heard. In the middle of the day, it was cool. How cool is that? Everything was. By the way, rain never, never, ever fell on, on earth in those days. Nobody had to buy an umbrella. Nobody had to take cover. It was a perfect world. And there were all trees. And everything was without interference of men. They were not chemically sprayed on. And they were not somehow engineered to feed the multitudes. They were organic. Free organic food anything you want just as a one tree one if you touch it you will surely die so okay 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 and guess what tree we wanted to touch the only one by the way god could have created us with the, without the ability to choose that tree. He could have. But then it wouldn't be free will. <laughs> then it wouldn't be true worship. Then it wouldn't be true love. Deuteronomy 30. Moses 
Through Moses, God is speaking. I call heaven and earth as witnesses to you or against you that I have set before your life, you, before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, what did he say? Choose life. He says, that's your choice. I give you free will. Choose life. That's my advice to you. Choose life. There are some religions that are sanctifying death. And they tell their people to explode and kill as many with them. They say to them, choose death because then 72 virgins will wait for you. And then they get to heaven and it is a spelling mistake. A 72 year old virgin that is waiting for them. I'm not even sure what it is. But how pathetic it is that all that is being promised to them is on this sexual realm. There's no holiness. There's no worship. There's nothing there besides virgins. God says to all of us, choose life. And then he said, not just life for you. When you choose life, both you and your descendants may live. That you may love. Look, only when you choose life. That right choice will lead you to what? Love the Lord your God. That you may obey his word. And that you may Cling to him, for he, the Lord, is your life. And the length of your days, not yoga, not juicing, the length of your days, the life that you need, is God. And who is God? Jesus. And that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them, of course. Joshua also, after Israel entered the land, after they've seen miracles after miracles, after he already divided the land between all the tribes, and each one received his tribal allotment, Joshua is finally sitting down, and he realizes those people, they got it too good, too fast, too well, and... Hmm, so he said to them, if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, what? Choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which are your fathers served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's a choice. Let's say it together. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's a choice. Ezekiel 18 says, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according what? To his ways, says the Lord God. Repent. Wow. It's a biblical word I just realized. Repent and turn from all your transgressions so that iniquity will not be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed and get yourself a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O house of Israel? God through the prophet says you need to be saved, Israel. Religion will not save you. Why should you die? For I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies. God is telling you right now, I'm the God of the living and I want you to live. You need to choose life and I take no pleasure in seeing anyone dead. Says the Lord God. Therefore what? Turn and live. John 1, but as many as received him, to them he gave what? The right to become children of God. If you receive Jesus, then and only then you're a child of God. All of us are children of God. No, only if you receive him. We're all created in the image of God. No, only Adam was. <laughs> Sorry to tell you that. The rest of you are created in the image of Adam and his descendants. Do you understand that? Seth was created by the image of Adam, not God. Adam was already a sinner. We're born in sin. 
how do you dare? The baby is, you are born in sin. David said that. In sin, my mother has conceived me. Psalm 51. To them he gave the right to become children of God and to those who believe in his name who are born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God. He says the only people that can call themselves children of God are those that were born again. Revelation 3.20 Behold I stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and open only if you hear his voice and what and open there is an active side on your part open the door then i will come in to him and dine with him and he with me so we already established god created everyone and god gave free will to everyone but then came the temptation temptation and we know that in genesis 3 that there was a real serpent and it, 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 it really received a real physical curse to crawl on its belly and eat dust for the duration of his life. Satan is not a, a physical being, although he can operate in the physical realm. He's a spiritual being that operates in the spiritual realm as evidences, as evidence in many passages that detail his spiritual attributes. We know that in 1 Peter, in Matthew, in Acts, in Ephesians. But in this amazing case of that first temptation, we know that Satan was, in a way, entering into that creature, the serpent. From other passages, we also find an important principle. Satan and demons can enter into people and animals and influence them. We've seen that. Remember, when the demons were casted out of the demon-possessed men, they entered into a, a herd of swines, if you remember that. And those herd of swines were losing it, running all the way into the Sea of Galilee and drowned. Genesis 3, 14 and 15. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all your days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. And shall bruise your, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. This is the very first Bible prophecy in the history. I mean, God moved to the future. He shall and you shall. It's a prophecy. From now on, let me tell you what's going to happen to you, Satan. You can only, only bruise the hill. But the seed that is about to come is going to crush your head. That's the end. Satan, you need to know from Genesis 3. There's an end. You're doomed to die. You're doomed to be crushed. And it's not going to be anything but the seed of the woman. And from that moment on, Satan is looking. Who is the seed of the woman so I can kill him? And, and, and he looked at, 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 at Cain and Abel. And who is the good guy? Abel. Oh, let's kill Abel. Little did he know that Seth will come. And something else is going to be happening. But sin continued. You see, sin entered and spread. It started with one very bad decision. And it, look what it, to what it evolved into. In Genesis 6, verses 1 to 4. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that, look, men began to multiply and daughters began to be born to them. In other words, humans are now growing in number. They have daughters. Daughters that were human. And then the sons of 
God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful. And they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. In fact, from that moment on, our lifespan was very limited to no longer than that, as you can see. But something strange happened. This is the first collusion. Look what happened. We see heavenly intervention with the earthly in a non-spiritual way. It's actually all about the flesh. It's all about the outer appearance. It's all about the daughters look beautiful and let's take whatever we can. Now, some people say that the son of, sons of God could be the sons of Seth. But um, no, sons of Seth were humans, still humans. But look at this, very interesting. In Genesis 4, 26, and as for Seth, to him also a son was born, and he named him Enosh. Then, then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Did you know, by the way, that's how it looks in Hebrew. I want you to show you. This is in Hebrew. Veleshet gamhu yulad ben, shmo enosh, as huchalikro b'shem Adonai. In other words, when Enosh was born, the, the descendants of Enosh started. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Did you know that in the words, in the Hebrew language, there is no word humanity? The word humanity is Enoshut, from Enosh. The word humans is Bnei Enosh, the sons of Enosh. Which by an interesting way, we're basically saying humans originally were created and designed to what? To call upon what? The name of the Lord. Humans. Humanity was designed to call upon the name of the Lord. But because humanity started began to call upon the name of the Lord, guess what happened? The first collusion happened. And the first collusion in chapter 6 brought forth the giants on the earth in those days. And also afterwards, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. Look. When humans men, uh, marries humans, giants are not being born. We are incapable of creating a new race that is not something that God ever made. There is something out of the ordinary that happened here that only could have happened if fallen angels actually looked into the daughters of men and those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown. By the way, the whole world must have started worshipping them. The whole world was fearing them, worshipping them. Men of renown is a title that may have caused the flood to come. When earth was so polluted and so ungodly. When it's the men that are renowned. When it's the, the creatures of the flesh from the, from, from, from the side of the mankind. And the disobedience from the side of angels. Because the Bible is very clear. Angels do not marry in heaven. Doesn't mean they cannot. They do not It's very interesting. Who are those sons of God again? Some say it's the son of Seth. Some says nobles, aristocrats, and kings. And of course, the fallen angels. 
The reason why I personally, and by the way, you can hold a different opinion than me. It's just that I'm the teacher right now. So you're going to have to wait with that. Nephilim were in the land. The word Nephilim comes from the Hebrew word to fall. Fallen. Nafal in Hebrew. Fell down. Men are already on earth. They don't have to fall down. Yes, you fall in sin. But to actually physically fall from one place and not to another in order to create a new breed of, of semi-human, semi-creatures that I don't even have a word to describe. You have to be fallen. And this is what I'm trying to say. The first collusion that we see is Satan, of course, had gathered with him angels. And this is angels versus God. And it's interesting because Isaiah 14, when he describes Satan, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt. By the way, that tells you that there are different levels in heaven. If Satan was in heaven, yet he wanted to ascend into where God is, that means that there are levels in heaven. It, when Satan was thrown down, it doesn't necessarily say it was thrown down to earth. Because to come back to earth will only happen when we go to heaven. And that is, of course, the great exchange. When the restrainer is removed, we go up, he comes down. And we'll see it. But I want you to see, he says... Go up, ascend into heaven, exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther side of the north. I will ascend above the height of the clouds, which means he is somewhere lower than that. And I will be like the Most High. That's what Satan wants to be, a counterfeit, like the Most High. And yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depth of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, all of them, Sleep in glory, everyone in his own house. But you are cast out of the grave like an abom abominable branch. But let me continue also to Ezekiel 28. In Ezekiel 28, he says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up the lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, and look at the description. Thus says the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection. Full of wisdom and perfect in beauty, you were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The worksmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created he is a created being and you were in the anoint you were the anointed cherub the anointed angel who covers i established you you were on the holy mountain of god you walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created until what iniquity was found in you by the abundance of your trading you became filled with violence within and you sinned and therefore i cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of god and i destroyed you O covering cherub or angel from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You, you see, it's all about the outer beauty. It's all about the looks. It's all about the flesh. He thought he is something else. And you corrupted your wisdom for the sake. It's wisdom and it's beauty. The two things that the world is worshipping today. 
and you were corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they may gaze into you. All who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you. So we understand that there's something happened up there <laughs> that caused God to take one of the most important angels and all of those who gathered with him and just throw them down from the holy mountain of the holy congregation. And now they may not be on earth necessarily, but they are much lower than anything else. And we know that uh, there were many of them. Now, generally, how many angels are there in heaven? Look, the Bible gives us bits and pieces about that one. In Matthew 26, Jesus said to him, put your sword in the place. For all you who take the sword will perish by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot now pray to my father and he will what? He will provide me with what? More than 12 legions of angels? Jesus said, look, just like that, there could be legions, 12 of them in heaven. That God created way more than that innumerable amount of angels daniel 7 9 and 10 says i watched till thrones were put in place and the ancient of days was seated his garment was white as snow and the hair of his head he's talking about jesus his hair on his head was like pure wool his throne was fiery flame its wheels a burning fire fierce stream issued and came forth from before him a thousand thousands ministered to him 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The court was seated and the books were open. And if that's not enough, you see in Hebrews 12, 12, 22, but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to what? To an innumerable company of angels. Even in Revelation 5, it says, And then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Did angels reproduce with humanity? Well, look what it says. In Matthew 22, it declares that at the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage, and they will be like the angels in heaven. However, the text does not say angels are not able to marry. Rather, it indicates only that angels do not marry. Then in Matthew 22:30, it refers to the angels in heaven but it is not referring to fallen angels who do not care about God's created order and activity and actively seek ways to disrupt God's plan. Remember, from the moment men started calling upon the name of the Lord, Enosh, Bnei Enosh, designed to call upon the name of the Lord, that's when Satan says, oh, we must do something about this because I thought after the the fall in Garden of Eden, I already destroyed them all. Oops. They start calling upon the name of the Lord again. Let's go down and mix with them and destroy them. Interesting. We know that while angels are spiritual beings, they can appear in human physical form. We've seen it. The men of Sodom and Gomorrah wanted to have sex, if you remember, with the two angels who were with Lot. It is plausible that angels are capable of taking on human form, even to the point of replicating human sexuality and poss possibly even reproduction. And why, why do the fallen angels do, do not do this more often? It's simply because God imprisoned the fallen angels who committed this evil sin then so that the other fallen angels would not do the same and we knew that we know that from Jude chapter or verse 6 anyway we know that they okay so so what happened there was a war angel i mean a great angel such as satan was actually gathering 
his, his own group of angels, they started colluding. A great collusion up there in heaven. And there's a heavenly war of the loyal angels against them. Believe it or not, we may live our life now, right now, right here, sipping from our Starbucks double espresso. Yet there is a war going on in the heavenlies. Spiritual war that it's in the places that we cannot see. Now a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. And then behind, the, uh, but then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. And his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw threw them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman look and then he says who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as he was born who is that child jesus who is that woman the nation of israel who was that dragon satan and what did he want to do immediately kill jesus when he's born remember that hello all the babies in bethlehem had to be killed from two years and below but she bore a male child who was what? To rule in the future. To rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was cut up to God and his throne. <laughs> you know who Jesus is right now. And then the woman fled into the wilderness. This is in the future. This is when the nation of Israel is going to spend 1260 days in the wilderness when the Antichrist wants to destroy them. 1260 days in biblical terms is three and a half years. The last three and a half years of the seven years tribulation will be when God will preserve Israel in the desert when he prepared a place for them. Look where she had a place prepared by God that they should feed her there on 1260 days. I love how the Bible is accurate to the day. From the timing of Revelation 12 with Israel kept throughout Jacob's trouble, we know that once we are out and the tribulation starts, then Satan and his host will be thrown down to earth. We know that. He's on earth already. So, isn't that interesting? He cannot be here while the Holy Spirit is here because we are here. When we are taken out of here, the restrainer is removed. Then that war that was in heaven is now, boom, going to be on earth. And a war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with a dragon. And the dragon and his angel fought, but they did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. And guess what? So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. And he was cast, cast to what? To earth. And his angels, what? Cast out with him. And then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of the brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down and they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death. Beautiful. And in Revelation 12, 7 to 17, it continues all the way to the end. And the dragon was enraged with a woman and he went, he, want to, he went to make a war with the rest of her offspring, with Israel, who keeps the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. When, of course, they were ministered to by 144,000 of all the 12 tribes of Israel. So, what do we see? We see that there was a war in the heavenlies. Then we see that there is an earthly war 
of the loyal believers. All of us are being described throughout our lives as people that are engaged in a spiritual warfare. Paul said to Timothy, I finished the race. I fought the good fight. That means there is a fight to fight. That means that the life of the believer from the moment you become a Christian is not a picnic. It's actually paved with so many struggles and so many spiritual warfare. John 14, I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me but that the world may know that I love the Father and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do arise and let us go from here. So, so listen, where is Satan now? I have a question. Where is he now? Right now, at this moment. We know that Satan is not yet cast down into the bottomless pit. We also know that he can only be himself, the dragon, on earth when, when the great exchange happened. So I know that we've seen verses about how he fell from above, but he's still in what we call heavenly realms. Look, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, from the mount of the congregation, from the holiest place where God and his angels are. But remember, Satan and his hosts are still in the heavenly realm. As Ephesians says in chapter 6, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the, the vile of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this age and against spiritual hosts of wickedness. Where? In the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. You see? You're fighting stuff that you cannot see. It's in the heavenly places. It's invisible. Satanic attack. Diabolic attack. Demonic attack. You can't see those demons, but they're all over. Jesus could easily see them, by the way. He could easily um, uh, be able to cast them out. And then, of course, he gave us that power. But listen, without Christ and without that Spirit of God, you cannot see those demons. You cannot see that amazing war and stand therefore having girded your waist with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the prep, uh, preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God Pre look the sword of the Spirit, it's the Word of God. Without the Word of God, you have no weapon. <laughs> you know, there was a lady that came to the airport, and I don't suggest that you do that. But the security in Israel is very, 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 very tough. And <laughs> do you have weapon? Yes, I do. <laughs> it's the Word of God. She had a Bible with her. But that weapon, that sword is the Word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me that um, utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in change, that in it I may speak boldly as ought to speak. The powers and principalities in the heavenly places wants to get those on earth. You have to understand that. They failed when Abel and Cain were not the end. And after Seth came Enosh, then they realized they failed. They failed when they produced the giants because then came the flood. And they failed when Jesus was born. And now we have all people having access to come boldly before the throne of grace to receive mercy and grace. They failed, but they want to get those on earth. And until the rapture happens, the restrainer restrains. Amen? 
For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until, there's a time limit, he is taken out of the way. And I want to submit to you that the minute we are out of here, because we are taken out of the way, there will be a temporary hostile takeover of Satan and his gang over this earth. That collusion finally will come to a small victory, but very limited in time, because we know. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one we heard today is according, according, it's according, it's exactly the way Satan always do, with all power and signs and lying wonders and with the unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Look, this whole, whole uh, uh, portion of scriptures is after we're gone. The lawless one will be revealed when we are no longer there. And all the signs that he's doing is not for us. It's for the people that rejected the love of the truth. And now they're following him like minions. But then, Zechariah 14 says, The return of Jesus to earth to reign. And his feet will stand in those days on Mount of Olives. And behold, the Lord comes back and his saints are coming with him. How many of you wants to come back with Jesus? In order to come back with Jesus, you have to go to be with Jesus first. And in order to be with Jesus first, you have to be believers in Jesus. You have to be born again, spirit-filled, disciples of the Lord. Follow him. He's your leader. You are the sons and daughters of God by adoption. Because we were sons of the, if you remember, of the what? Of the, um, uh, well, uh, we call it um, rebellion. And then this, we were adopted back. And now we can call him Abba Father. And he's going to take us because we are not destined to the wrath of God, the Bible says. The Bible says that he will take us out of the hour of trial that is about to come upon this world. And then, of course, 2 Timothy says, this is faithful saying, for if we died with him, we shall also live with him. And if we endure, we also shall reign with him. And if we deny him, unfortunately, he will also deny us. Revelation 26, blessed and holy is he who has part in the what? First resurrection. The first resurrection began with the resurrection of Jesus because he was the first fruits from among those who fell asleep. No one before Jesus ever was born, died, resurrected, and never died again besides Jesus. People were taken before they saw death. We know that Enoch, we know that about Elijah. But no one was ever resurrected after he saw death. Like for example, Lazarus. And then never died. Lazarus died eventually. Jesus is the first fruit. After Jesus, remember the saints of Jerusalem of the day. When when he, remember? People from amongst the disciples who died. came, And then of course after that. And the most important thing is that our rapture is, Jesus said to to, uh, uh, Martha, I'm the resurrection and the life. (laughs) He is the resurrection of the dead and he's the life of those who have not died yet. And I believe with all the signs that we see around the world, when Israel is back in their land, when Jerusalem is back in our hands, when all the nations around us are collaborating together, waiting for the moment to invade and to take with that hook of the oil and the gas we just found in Russia and in Iran and Turkey are now allies and Libya and Sudan are waiting around the corner. We see apostasy all around. We see false messiahs 
Hello, right around the corner over here. We see nations against nations, kingdom against kingdoms. We see earthquakes, pestilences, volcanoes. We see all the signs that Jesus said that will characterize the end time. It's all there. We are the generation that shall not pass away. We are the generation that is witnessing the rebirth of Israel and the fig tree that has come back to life. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection over such. The second death has no power, but he, they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So for 1,000 years, we are going to reign with Jesus and the collusion is put on hold for the whole time. But then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain is in his hand and he laid hold of the dragon that serpent of old who is the devil and satan and he bound him for a thousand years and he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more until what the thousand years were finished but after these things he what what is the word after he must say that again say that again remember must it's not maybe could be he must be released for a little while you know why god is saying to the whole world i gave you 1000 years without satan 1000 years with no diseases 1000 years without deadly animals 1,000 years righteousness all over the world. 1,000 years Jesus was there physically reigning from Jerusalem. 1,000 years you had a chance to believe, to follow, to be part of the family of God. One, not 100, 1,000 years. And let me see, once I release Satan for a short time, what's going to happen. And guess what's going to happen. The Bible says... When the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them what? Together to a battle whose number is as the sand of the sea. You would think that after a thousand years with Jesus, all of them are born again, spirit-filled, wonderful believers. All of them love the Lord. They'll never get near Satan. The number of the sand of the sea, they went up to the breath of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire then came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. That was the end of the final collusion. And forever and ever means forever and ever. And I want to conclude with the words that Paul said to Timothy. Be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Look at yourself. We just heard from Pastor Barry that pastors are there to teach the flock to do what? Ministry. To preach the word. None of you is not a minister. All of you must do ministry by ways of a simple order from the word of God. There will be wars. There will be tri a trials. In this world you will have tribulation, Jesus said. But that should not stop you. Because he who endures will sit with Jesus on that throne. And judge with him and rule with him. And until then, let's fight the good fight. Not punching in the air. But fighting the good fight. Let's run the race. Not just walking. 
We're running in order to win, as 1 Corinthians 9 says. Endure afflictions and do the work of the evangelist. Look, nothing is an excuse not to preach the gospel. Fulfill your ministry. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that the great collusion is very, very clear and evident to us. And it's not going to surprise us. We've seen it from the dawn of history. We've seen the pathetic attempts of the enemy to take over, to be the master and the ruler of this world, and to completely deceive all the nations around. And Father, you have appointed Israel to be your witnesses. And later on, you have appointed the church to be your witnesses. And you have created both of them as two trumpets that must sound the very fact that you are about to come back again to this world. And Father, you said in your word, if a trumpet makes an uncertain sound, who is going to prepare for a battle? So today, from this place, we present ourselves again as trumpets. And we ask that your spirit will be the thing that flows from our mouth, from us, as the mouthpiece that makes not an uncertain, but a very certain sound of the trumpet to warn the world of the coming judgment and to give hope to the world of the wonderful work of Jesus that is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. And there is hope, and His name is Emmanuel, is Yeshua HaMashiach, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, who can give you peace now and forever, here and everywhere. It's in His name that we pray, and all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.